BestBookBits.com presents Get Into Yes, Negotiating an Agreement Without Giving In by Roger Fisher and William Urey. Published back in 1981 and weighing in at 224 pages. Since its original publication nearly 30 years ago, Get Into Yes has helped millions of people learn a better way to negotiate. One of the primary business texts of the modern era, it is based on the work of the Harvard Negotiation Project, a group that deals with all levels of negotiation and conflict resolution. Getting to Yes offers a proven step-by-step strategy for coming to mutually acceptable agreements in every sort of conflict. Thoroughly updated and revised, it offers readers a straightforward, universally applicable method for negotiating personal and professional disputes without getting angry or getting taken. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Getting to Yes. Lessons. The method of principled negotiation developed at the Harvard Negotiation Project is to decide issues on their merits rather than through a haggling process focused on what each side says it will and won't do. It suggests you look for mutual gains whenever possible And where your interests conflict, you should insist that the result be based on some fair standards, independent of the will of either side. The problem. Any method of negotiation should be judged by three criteria. It should produce a wise agreement if agreement is possible. It should be efficient. And it should improve or at least not damage the relationship between the parties. The more you clarify your position and defend it against attack, the more committed you become to it. Arguing over positions is inefficient. Arguing over positions endangers an ongoing relationship. When there are many parties, positional bargaining is even worse. Being nice isn't the answer either. The straightforward principled negotiation method. People. Separate the people from the problem. Separate the people from the problem. Negotiators are people first. Every negotiator has an interest in the result and in the relationship. To work through people problems, think in terms of perception, emotion, and communication. Perception. The ability to see the situation from the other side is one of the most important skills a negotiator can possess. Look for opportunities to surprise their perceptions, especially if those perceptions put you in a bad light. Give them a stake in the outcome by letting them participate in the process. Discuss each other's perceptions. Don't blame them for your problem. Make your proposal consistent with their values and let them save face. Emotion. Recognize and understand emotions, theirs and yours. Consider the role of identity. Understand if their identity is threatened. Emotions are always legitimate. Allow them to let off steam if necessary. Don't react to emotional outburst. Use symbolic gestures, gift giving, etc. to show empathy. Communication. Listen actively and acknowledge what is being said. Speak to be understood. Talk to every side of the disagreement. Speak about yourself, not about them. Don't superimpose your impressions on them. Speak for a purpose. Don't waste breath. Prevention is the best method. Build a strong working relationship. Be friends outside of the negotiation. Face the problem, not the people. Don't view the other side as adversaries. Interest. Focus on interest, not positions. For a wise solution, reconcile interest, not positions. Interest define what the problem is. Your positions are something that you have decided upon. Your interests are what cause you to decide. How do you identify interest? Ask why. Put yourself in their shoes and try to figure out how they arrived at their positions. Ask why not. What interest of theirs stands in the way of your decision? Why do they not want what you want? Realize that both sides have multiple interests. Most powerful interests are basic human needs. Maslow's Pyramid. Talking about interest. If you want the other side to consider your interest, you must explain what those interests are. Acknowledge these interests and that you understand them. Put the problem before your answer. Give your interest and reasoning first and your conclusions or proposals later. Look forward, not back. Sometimes we argue for no reason or purpose. 
Be hard on the problem, but soft on the people. By attacking the problem and at the same time, giving the person on the other side positive support, you create a cognitive dissonance for him. To overcome this dissonance, he will be tempted to disassociate himself from the problem in order to join you in doing something about it. Options. Invent multiple options looking for mutual gains before deciding what to do. In most negotiations, there are four major obstacles that inhibit the inventing of an abundance of options. Premature judgment. Searching for the single answer. The assumption of a fixed pie. Thinking that solving their problem is their problem. To invent creative options, then you will need to separate the act of inventing options from the act of judging them. Before you brainstorm, define your purpose. Think about what you want to walk out of the meeting with. Choose a few participants. Change the environment. Design an informal atmosphere. Choose a facilitator, someone who can keep the meeting on track. Make sure everyone can speak. Enforce ground rules and stimulate discussion. During brainstorming, seat everyone side by side facing the problem. Clarify the ground rules and outlaw criticism of any kind. Brainstorm. Record the ideas in full view. After brainstorming, star the most promising idea, relax the no criticism rule, and begin winnowing out the most promising ideas. Invent improvements for promising ideas. Make it as attractive as you can. Set up a time to evaluate ideas and decide. Brainstorm with the other side too. Broaden the options on the table rather than look for a single answer. Search for mutual gains. Identify shared interest. Shared interest are latent in every negotiation. Shared interest opportunities, not God sense. You have to make something out of them. Stressing your shared interest can make the negotiation smoother and more amicable. Dovetail differing interest. Different beliefs, different values placed on time. Different forecast, differences in aversion to risk. Look for items that are low cost to you and high benefit to them, and vice versa. Invent ways of making the decision easy. It is usually easier to refrain from doing something not being done than to stop action already underway. It is easier to cease doing something than to undertake an entirely new course of action. Few things facilitate a decision as much as precedent. Criteria. Insist that the result be based on some objective standard. Deciding on the basis of will is costly. Use objective criteria instead. Principled negotiation produces wise agreements amicably and effectively. Developing objective criteria. Develop fair standards for evaluation. Use fair procedures for resolving the conflicting issues. Negotiating with objective criteria. Frame each issue as a search for objective criteria. Ask for the theory behind positions. Ask for the theory behind positions. How did you arrive at that price? Agree on principles first. Reason and be open to reasons as to which standards are most appropriate and how they should be applied. Never yield to pressure, only to principle. Never yield to pressure, only to principle. Best alternative to a negotiated agreement. The cost of using a bottom line. It keeps you from being more inventive with solutions. It can sometimes prevent you from making an advantageous decision. Know your B-T-A-N-A. If you can't sell your house, that will you rent it. Tear it down and sell the lot. Keep it on the market indefinitely. Formulate a trip why to activate your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Develop your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Invent a list of actions you might take if no agreement is reached. Improve some of the more promising ideas and convert them into practical alternatives. Select to tentatively the one idea that seems best. Always consider the other side's best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Negotiation jiu-jitsu for when they won't play. How do you prevent the cycle of action and reaction? Don't push back. Avoid pitting your strength against them directly. Instead, use your skill to develop a side and turn their strength to your end. Do not attack their position. 
look behind it. Assume every position is a genuine attempt to address the basic concerns of both sides. Seek out and discuss the principles underlying their position. Discuss what would happen if one of their positions were accepted. Sometimes framing it in this way can show its weakness. Don't defend your ideas, invent criticism and advice. Ask them what's wrong with your idea. Ask them for their advice or what they would do in your situation. Recast an attack on you as an attack on the problem. If they attack you personally, resist the temptation to defend yourself or to attack back. Let them let off steam. Ask questions and pause. Use questions instead of statements. What if they use dirty tricks? Deliberate deception. Phony facts. Make the negotiation process independent of trust. Verify factual assertions as you go. Ambiguous authority. Ask just how much authority they have on this matter. Dubious intentions. Pretending to be in support of one thing to convince you of another. Psychological warfare. Stressful situations. If you find the situation prejudicial, say so and try to change it. Personal attacks. If you're being personally attacked, bring it up explicitly. Good guy, bad guy routine. Threats. Good negotiators do not resort to threats. Warnings are much more legitimate so long as they are backed by the reality of the situation. Positional pressure tactics. Refusal to negotiate. Recognize this as a possible ploy to get some concession from you. Talk about their refusal to negotiate, why they do not want to. Insist on using principles. Extreme demands. Ask for principal justification of the stat stance to show them how ridiculous it is. Escalating demands. Call it to their attention and stop negotiations for a bit. Insist on principles to make it more serious. Locking tactic. One side entirely locks in their position. Ignore the lock-in, talk about the principles and let them back down and save face. Take it or leave it. Ignore it and then draw attention to it as a problem. And last, don't be a victim. That's a wrap on Getting to Yes by Roger Fisher and William Urey. Subscribe to our channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. Like and share if you got something from this summary and comment on what one thing stood out for you. Thanks for watching and have yourself an amazing day.